Hey, Life Grub leaders, uh, this is uh, Ken and Tom, and we're going to go over the lesson for you this week. Uh, we've got a great lesson. Uh, we're still in the uh, book of Luke, chapter 5. We're going to cover uh, verses 17 through 26. And um, there's a lot in this chapter, chapter 5. Uh, it details the call of some of the 12. Uh, there's some miracles in here. There's a parable in here. And so... It looks like Luke's just kind of mishmashing a bunch of stuff into one chapter, uh, although when he wrote it, it wasn't a chapter, but uh, the way it's uh, detailed for us now it is. Uh, but we'll talk about a little bit later about why uh, I think all these things are together, what, what the binder is for them. Um, the story today is a pretty familiar one to, to most of us. If you grew up in church, I mean, you've heard about this story several times. Lots of pastors preach sermons on it. Uh, I'm sure Tom's taught on this lesson. So I jotted times. down some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so he he's got archives going back to the ar there. archives yeah. or the well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is pretty early in Jesus' ministry, yeah. but he's already gained a lot of fame, if you will, and so people are already starting to try to find out where he's at. You know where he's, uh, you know, having his next town hall meeting. And uh, so he's he's in Capernaum uh, in this story, and uh, we see a lot in this story the intersection of Jesus as man and God or deity. Yeah. Um, in verse seventeen, it says the Lord's power is with him, uh, meaning God the Father. So that that portrays Jesus as the man, and God is giving him the power. Uh, to That's do good. these things and the authority as well. Uh, in Mark uh, Mark 2, uh, Matthew chapter 9 and Mark chapter 2, the same story is in there and they, they tell the same story, although from a little bit different viewpoint of Luke. And also Luke adds a little bit more detail yeah, than does. they do. Yeah. So we get a lot for a picture of what's happening from Luke. Uh, but in, in 2.8, uh, Mark tells us that Jesus... Uh, you know, knew what the religious leaders were thinking uh, when when he said some of the things he did by supernatural means. That's not really clear in in Matthew and Luke's um, version of the story. So, uh, you know, you, you guys can talk about that. Um, how you know, if you look at all three of the Gospels, this will you know become a lot more clear, and um, we'll talk about that some more in a minute as well. Uh, in verse 24, Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man, mm -hmm. uh, speaking to his earthly entity, but also he has the power of deity to forgive sin, as we'll see in the story. So so lots of different um, views of Jesus as man and as, as God. And I know that's sometimes confusing for us, yeah. but um, in this story we see it you know, interacting very well and, and see that he is both. He is God and man. Um, a lot of times this story focuses on the paralytic and his friends, uh, but, but I think this whole story is focused on Jesus. That's right. And his ability to save us eternally. That's the point of the story and really of the whole chapter. If you look at this and say, you know, why is this miracle in here? Uh, along with the miracle of cleansing the leper, and, and then it's kind of, you know, bookended by Jesus calling Matthew and Jesus calling Simon Peter and some of the others. Um, but the, uh, you know, the overriding theme that Luke has in all of this is Jesus coming to do his ministry and to save us That's right. uh, as a people. Um I just put together some questions that you might use uh, in in your uh, in your class, and when you go through these questions, uh, we call this life groups. Used to be Sunday school when I was a little kid. Um, some people call it Bible study, though, but I think of this as Bible study, and uh, I think you should encourage your class to study the Bible. That's right. Um, not to come to class to be taught this lesson and never having looked at it through the week you know it, it'd be great if they looked at it through the week studied it some and then could actively participate yeah. uh, almost like class. you shouldn't have to even read the passage 
Right. They should have already read it. In, right. Yeah. Right. So uh, some classes probably do that great. Others probably not as well. Um, so whatever your class is, kind of gauge that and encourage them to, to use the Bible. And as you ask questions, as we go through these questions, you know, say, instead of saying, you know, I feel like it's this or that, you know, challenge them. Use the Bible to answer the question. That's great. Um, great. And, and, you know, the Bible doesn't tell us everything, and there's interpretation uh, to some degree. But, you know, the more we use the Bible to answer these questions, the more we're going to get out of it and, and get what God wants us to. Um, and, and, again, reading Luke's version and then Matthew's and Mark's, I mean, you just get a fuller picture of what's going on because each one of them adds something different uh, in a different viewpoint. Uh, one of the first questions I had, though, is uh, why were the religious leaders there? Um, were they curious? Were they already full of contempt and trying to trap Jesus? Uh, were they there to learn? Uh, Jesus was teaching. You know, at this time, he wasn't necessarily there to heal, particularly. Uh, he was teaching. So, you know, were they there to learn from him? Were they curious? Were they there to trap him? Uh, I've, I've heard it preached all three different ways <laughs> and, you know, I don't know that, I don't know that the Bible specifically tells us, uh, Mark is, a, I think it's Mark or, or maybe Matthew that says, you know, when Jesus answers, he says, you know, why do you think these evil thoughts? But, but I don't know that Jesus, when he answered was particularly condemning of them. Right. Um, so, right. um, you know, but that's a, that's an interesting topic to talk about with your class, uh, because people typically think one way or the other. They think, oh, the, you know, the religious leaders were there to to trap him, and, uh, you know, I don't I don't know what the Bible says that specifically. Um, and uh, as I'm going through these, Tom, do you have anything to add? No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm following, with, following with you. Uh, why wouldn't the people in the house let the paralytic through? Yeah, you, know, you think about this. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. So I get it. The, the the everything was crowded. The doors were, were blocked. But you know, here's here's these guys. They brought this guy from who knows where. You know, and they're trying to get in to see Jesus. And you'd think, I mean, what would we do? You know, if someone that were handicapped or something was trying to get into the church service, would we let them in? Sure. You'd think we'd part ways. And and the people they, um, you know didn't do it for whatever reason. Uh, I listened to one sermon that, you know, the pastor said, you know, he thought the people were there for almost like a, uh, a, a entertainment value, hmm. you know, and they weren't there necessarily to be enriched in what Jesus was saying or to get closer to God or any of that. They, they were just there. And, and so these weren't necessarily people that were seeking you know, a higher elevation in their spiritual life. <laughs> and so, they might not have been the kind of people that wouldn't let this person through. Wow. Uh, because surely they tried, right? Surely right. they tried to get through the door first <laughs> before they start tearing the roof off. I wonder what the people uh, that own the house thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. Um, so, uh, yeah, and we'll talk about that in a minute, Good. too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the friends, though, they had faith that Jesus could heal the paralytic. Um, That's right. You know, in verses 18 and 19, it talks about the faith they had. Mm -hmm. They didn't just pray for it, though. They didn't just pray, oh, I hope Jesus heals my friend, or I hope we get in to see him. They acted. That's right. Uh, and and they were on a mission to not be stopped. Yeah. Um, and so a good question is, do you think this is the state of most Christians today yeah. or the church today? They dared to be different. That's right. You know, yeah. they dared to be different. Right. That's right. Um, then also uh, in verse 26, it says everyone was amazed and they were glorifying God when, when this miracle happened. Do you think that included the religious leaders that were there? Mm. Because the Bible doesn't specify. It just says all that were there. Um, so it's interesting to wonder if they were converted at that time, because it doesn't really uh, identify these people other than saying they were Pharisees and scribes. Um, and so these could have been, you know, there were scribes of all the sects uh, of religion at that right. time. And so we don't really know, you know, who they were because they came from all over, it says. So, um, 
you know, the, that's a good question to think about. How did it impact them going away? Uh, I think it would either have drawn them to Jesus' side or, or to push them even further yeah. away and, and to go the other way. Um, and then finally, along that same thing, uh, again, as Tom has taught me, words are very important. It says they were amazed and they glorified God and they walked away saying, we have seen extraordinary things today. Right. So the question is, did the people recognize Jesus as the Messiah? Yeah. Because it doesn't say that. It doesn't. It just says remarkable. Mine says remarkable things. Right. It didn't tell you anything, does it? Right. It makes you wonder. So were they simply amazed by the miracle, or did they truly recognize Jesus' messianic position? Yeah. And so that's a great question to talk about with your class. Um, and then the, the last few verses through here, you know, Jesus' response to the man. I mean, initially he, he tells them that his sins are forgiven. Mm-hmm. And it's not apparent that Jesus is going to heal him. That's right. Uh, And so it's almost as if his physical state is of little significance to Jesus, but he only changed it to show his authority uh, to those that were weak-minded. And, you know, most of the time we're weak-minded. You know, that's us. (laughs) And God has to continually pour stuff out of his book and and through the Holy Spirit uh, as we try to walk with him into us. Um, And so... Um, you know, that's a great topic to talk about is initially Jesus looked past his infirmity and, and you know. His greater need. Yeah. Yeah. And said, you know, his, his need is his salvation, not right. his healing. Right. And uh, he only healed to show um, the people that were there that he did have the authority that's right. to save him. Um. And, you know, when he was healed, uh, you know, the, the theme of that to me was if I couldn't walk or hear or see or had some kind of infirmity like that, and then all of a sudden I could do that thing, I mean, the happiness would be unbelievable. That's right. That's right. I mean, can you imagine? And you wish, <clears throat> you wish in 25, verse 25, Luke had elaborated. Immediately he got up picked up what he'd been laying on, went home. Of course, it says glorifying God, but you wonder if he was leaping. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, you almost right. want to say it's okay right. to jump up and down here, right. you know. Uh, it doesn't really say that. Now, glorifying God would, I guess, bring maybe at least some imagination into that. Uh, I could just be thinking about if that had been us, you know, how we would have. Um, reacted yeah yeah, yeah. you know I mean, probably not very passive you know right. and maybe maybe he wasn't it's hard to tell mm-hmm. so um yeah so jesus is saying you know to me in these verses he's saying that you know those things those infirmities pale in comparison that's right to our eternal salvation that's right and, and that's the key to the whole lesson is that you know, we, we have lots of things in this world that aren't right uh, because of sin right. and because of being separated from God. And sometimes we cause those things, sometimes we don't, but uh, we have to go through them. And, and Jesus is saying, you know, none, none of that matters compared to salvation, that's right. That's, that's your, right. your eternal destination. Um, yeah. Ken, I was thinking... Um, about all that and actually look back and I'll maybe make a reference to that in a moment but one of the statements that that I've made before and the text shows it is that you know all sickness in a general sense all sickness is a result of sin Mm -hmm. that's a hard statement and you could get in some pretty good debates not that any specific sin brings sickness right but the fact is sin bring sickness and if it wasn't for sin there would be no sickness and so the pointer this whole lesson is just like you said it points to jesus mm-hmm. his ability 
not just to heal, but to do primary forgiveness of sin. Right. Yeah. And so with that in mind, it, it's interesting, you know, you brought up what happened to the man once he yeah. was healed and, and got up. <clears throat> it never says another word about his friends. No. They were probably having a roofing job. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I kind of, in my mind, I paralleled the friends with the church today mm, um, because good. the crowd could have prevented this man from being saved if his friends had not been so determined right. to, to find Jesus. They were seeking Jesus. And, uh, you know, the question I had is, what, what's our crowd today? Uh, what obstacles are stopping the church or us as part of the church from working yeah. uh, to spread the gospel? Are we willing to skirt the crowd by risking being embarrassed or having to pay for a new roof, which obviously these men probably would have had to do, uh, or to risk something else, you know, failure? What if they'd have let him down and Jesus said, what, what are you doing, you know, and... Uh, mm. You know, and so those are simple things, but it seems like those are things that could easily stop us. I know me, depending on where I'm at, you know, in my spiritual walk, yeah. those are simple things that could stop me from spreading the gospel. And, and uh, you know, that's that's, right. that's what uh, this lesson's about, I think, to teach us, hey, th these guys right. did it right. I, I jotted down. We ought to let our imagination be used so that our passions can be driven. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get in, so they and they were driven by passion for their friend. Right. And their, their faith led them to do that. So what did they do? Well, they used their imagination. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we box ourselves in a little bit. We ought to let our imaginations, the church ought to use our imagination to let our passion for Christ and passion for the lost, hopefully, right. uh, lead us to do things maybe a little unconventional. Yeah. It's okay to get out of the box, even sure. if we're a little nervous about it. Well, we talk a lot about having faith in our mission as a church, having faith in our Savior. And what does that mean? That's right. Does that mean just praying, you know, fervently every day and reading our Bible every day? That, that's part of it, but I think that's only part of it. Yeah. And I think that action is uh, what a lot of us, you know, allow just, you know, life to get in the way of, of doing that as often as we should. Um, well, one of the guys I listened to, he talked about the roofs at that time. He said, you know, we, we think about this. What did that look like? And he said, it, likely there was tile on the top. So they would have had to tear the tile out. And first of all, they would have had to figure out where Jesus was because they dropped the guy in the wrong oh, room. Right. I didn't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then they would have torn the tile off. And then under the tile is, is some thatch with mud. And right. so they would have had to literally dig that out. I wonder if any mud got on Jesus. I'm sure it was <laughs> falling all on everyone down there, you know. And then they had to remove the beams that yeah. were holding it all together uh, wide enough to, to lower this guy, I mean, you're talking about four or five feet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this was not a simple, you know, we'll just open up and, a little hole and, and drop him in. I the mean, noise was worse than a baby crying in church. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Here Jesus is trying to teach, you know. and <laughs> What's going on here, you know? We've and, all had those thoughts. Yeah. And, and, you know, the way I think of it is, yeah, okay, they <clears throat> open up a hole and dropped him in. It had more. to have taken them a little while, you know, so this was yeah. not a, you know, one minute interruption. This this was going on. Stuff was probably starting to fall for yeah. five or ten minutes before they actually got him down in there. So, um, you know, good. to go to all that trouble and then I think about so many times I have opportunity to do things for Jesus and, uh, you know, it's way less trouble than this, but I feel like that's what's stopping me. Yeah. And so that's a good point. Um, it's a great lesson to think about taking action for uh, our Lord. Um, that's, right. that's the least we can do for him, and that's what these, these guys were doing here for him. 
Um, Jesus said, you know, he said, your sins are forgiven because of your faith. That's and, right. you know, one of the questions I thought about is, who's he talking about? Is he talking about the friends or is he talking about the man? Mm. And I think he's probably talking about both of them. Yeah. I think they yeah, all right. they all had, had faith. So, yeah. I think, too, I... I, I remember teaching or preaching, so I went back to the archives. I used Mark chapter 2 when I did it, and Ken's right, Life Group Leaders, this is about Jesus. This is about his authority. That's the main lesson here. But you can't help <laughs> but look at these friends. Uh, it's secondary. You know, it's kind of uh, an adder, but you have to. And so I I pulled out that old sermon and began to think back. And it was been a while ago, but I remember wrestling with that tension. And so what I did in, in, in the sermon I preached, and I should have looked at the date. I don't even remember, but it's been years. I wrote down, well, how can you acknowledge those guys, but then... How can you focus on Jesus? Because that's the yeah. main yeah. thrust. So I, I wrote this down. More than one can always do more than one can do. But yeah. there's one who can always do more than one can do. I now, like <laughs> I have to read that because I get tongue-tied real easily <laughs> when I'm preaching. And as you guys well know. So I remember thinking, this is going to really confuse me. But more than one can always do more than one can do. But there's one who can always do more than one can do. That kind of gets yeah. it back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I did that years ago. And, uh, you know, it kind of focuses on Christ, but it brings in the the guys who dared to be different. Yeah. Got, out of the, got out of the bubble, out of the the standard conventional thought, God bless them. Mm -hmm. We need more of that. We need to be those kinds of friends, don't we? We do. And, yeah. and you know, all of you probably have people in your class that act for God all the time. I mean, yeah. this church is fantastic as far as doing this lesson. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, you know, if you've got a great example in your class of, of this, bring, bring it out. And, That's right. you know, use that to motivate people and to draw us closer yeah so. i think um knowing we were going to do this this evening uh i came by church earlier today and uh, i don't know if this was the food pantry day or not mm -hmm. but i it hit me that there were some cars up the hill so it hit me that you know unbeknownst to me there were people up there either getting ready to serve or serving Right, doing what more than one can do right. for the glory of God, and our church is good at that. Whether it's the food pantry, of course, when when before COVID we had the recess ministry, I mm -hmm. think it's just a fabulous ministry right. that God has brought. Uh, but the the day by day, week by week uh, ministries of our people to other mm -hmm. people uh, is what this maybe a secondary lesson here. But it's certainly relevant to uh, to the scriptures here. Right. Yeah. Good. Well, that's all I've got. I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, I know you guys are going to have a great class, really good discussion in here. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's an uplifting lesson. Uh, great things in it. So, Well, gang, we, we thank you for joining with us. I always like to listen to Ken when he teaches. Of course, Sunday when I'm in there, it'll all be, I know what he's going to say. Uh, but that's okay, because he always says it really well. Well, God bless you. Hang in there. One of these days, COVID will be over, and we'll be back all together. Be sure you're contacting your people. Be sure you're letting them know how much you love them. God bless you.